everybody, Emily here. Welcome to the second video in our series on perfection and homemaking. Today we're going to be discussing meal preparation, which is, I think, one of the most stressful things that has to be done throughout the day. It comes around three times, and often when things are stressful for us, we tend to throw out meal planning and fly by the seat of our pants. And um, when we have nothing um, in our cabinets or in our fridge, then we have to run to the store or we have to rely on takeout or we have to um, get a restaurant meal. And that's not only expensive, it's not the healthiest or the easiest option a lot of the time. So um, I thought that I'd share with you my top tips for making meal planning easy. And uh, the first of those is probably the most important and that is menu planning. And so I thought I'd share with you what I do for menu planning. I write down each day of the week that I'm going to be planning for and I put three spaces breakfast lunch and dinner as well as a section for extras and extras might include if you go to church and you participate in coffee hour it might be desserts it could be um, food to bring to a play date whatever you need whatever's coming up in your week that you need extra food for you can pop right in that area and if you fill all of those spots out, then you know that you are covered for the whole week in your planning. So let's start with breakfast. For breakfast, you can be as simple or as elaborate as you like. You could write down for every single day, cereal and milk and a piece of fruit. And that is all that you will serve. And that is perfectly fine and acceptable. And if you are very stressed out, sleep deprived, if you have a lot of things going on, I would completely recommend doing that. You know that cereal and milk and a piece of fruit is a well-balanced, good breakfast for the day. If you want to be more elaborate, you could have one day be um, an egg dish, the next day be cereal, the next day be pancakes, the next day be waffles, etc. and so forth. You can be as creative or easy, you know, as you prefer to be. The next thing that comes down on your list is lunch. And lunch can be a little bit more tricky, but it doesn't have to be. What I like to do is I like to come up with uh, something that is a vegetable, something that is a fruit, something that is dairy, something that is a sandwich or a soup, and then something that's fun like chips, pickles, things like that. And I try to have all of those categories in my uh, pantry and in my refrigerator so that I can just quickly pull from them. So I have, um, usually I buy um, several bags of uh, pretzels or chips or popcorn, uh, goldfish crackers, things of that nature. I also get, we enjoy pickles, we like olives, so I get some of those. Um, the children in, like those yogurt tubes that they have in the store. They have a lot of different varieties of them. Um, so I usually get a box of those. Um, we get several different varieties of fruit, clementines, bananas, apples, grapes, things of that nature. And then we also get some fun um, vegetables that everybody likes. Um, my children really like salad. Um, so I get a lot of salad things, but you could get cucumbers and carrots, uh, little radishes, um, anything that you know that your children will eat, avocado. Um, get a lot of those things and then um, you can easily put together a little lunch plate for them that is fast, delicious, and really easy to, to do. Um, a lot of times for sandwiches I'll decide on um, what sort of sandwich we're going to have on a particular day and then I just pick from that components what goes well with that. Um, grilled cheese is a nice option, uh, tuna fish, tuna melts, egg salad, lunch meat, hot dogs, little hamburgers, um, and then soups. You could have uh, simple canned soups or you can have a large pot of soup that you make for dinner one night and just dole out little cups of it for, um, for lunch with a little side of bread or something. Um, so lunch is really um, pretty easy because you don't need to worry too much about um, the variety if you have a lot of little components that that your family enjoys eating. The third menu item is dinner and that I think is a little more daunting for a lot of people because it takes some more preparation but I think if you have breakfast and lunch down and you keep them easy then dinner will sort of take care of itself. Um, a lot of times I like to prepare something 
uh, rather large that I know that I can spread out over a few days or make into different things. So uh, one day you might like to make um, a couple of chickens and have chicken for your main meal with the little um, sides like some stuffing, some potatoes, another sort of vegetable. And then the next day you can have a large salad with some bits of the chicken on top. And then the third day you could make chicken noodle soup with that. Um, you can also uh, make things uh, have a special day for each thing, like you could have Meatball Monday and Taco Tuesday, um, you could have a soup night, you could have an Italian night. Um, there's lots of different ways to go about um, preparing your meals for dinner. But what I really suggest is that you think of one main uh, part of your meal, your soup, your chili, your uh, chicken, your uh, taco, whatever it is that you're making for the main, and then work from there. And think of uh, two one or two sides to go with that. Um, and just jot all of this down on your menu plan. Um, also take into account how your days are going. So if you have a busy day, don't make an elaborate meal on, the, on a day like that. You're gonna be too worn out to tackle it. Think of something simpler on those days. On the days when you have not too much going on, then you can make something that's a little bit more complicated or requires a little more time in the kitchen. Don't forget your extras. Think about the fact that you might have coffee hour to bring something to, or a potluck. Think about um, making a dessert, especially desserts for birthdays or names days. Think about um, some snacks that you might need uh, during the week. Or if you're taking a trip to the zoo and you want to bring um, a bag of uh, raisins or um, other uh, snacky type things, a box of crackers with you to munch on as, the, as you walk through um, just sort of have an overlook of your week and decide what are you going to eat every day that week so that you can eliminate all of those stops at McDonald's or the quick run into the grocery store to get a frozen pizza or the, the Chinese food delivery, you know, on the fly. I think if you try to eliminate as many of those stops as possible, when you do get to have treats out, you can splurge a little bit more or you can find that they have a little bit more meaning. Um, so my first tip is menu plan for every single little minuscule thing that you're going to eat during the week. The second tip that I have is to write down your grocery list with your menu plan in hand. I like to have a piece of paper or a notebook that I keep on the counter to jot down things as we run out of them. And then when I sit down with my menu plan, I take out my list and I look at each item. I say, all right, we're having eggs for breakfast. We're having cold cereal, so I need to jot down eggs. I need to jot down a box of cereal. I need to jot down milk. I need to jot down bread for toast. I need, we're having tuna fish sandwiches on Tuesday, so we need cans of tuna. Let me check if I need celery. Nope, we have enough celery. Oh, we do need some mayonnaise though and we need some onions. Jot those down. Oh, I'm making guacamole to go with the chili. Let's put down avocados and a red onion and some lime, etc. You just go right through your menu day by day and you write down the things that you have. If you are not sure if you have them, you just run right into the kitchen and you you look and see if you have enough Tabasco sauce or enough tomatoes for your um, for the tomato sauce that you're making. Whatever it is that you need for that week, you write on that list because I will tell you, the fewer grocery trips you have to take, the easier things will be for you. If you have to run to the store several times a week, it's going to be very difficult, especially if you're already stressed. Those shopping trips are not easy and you often end up buying more things than you would have if you had just taken one trip to the store. So menu planning and keeping a weekly shopping trip and writing down a very detailed grocery list, these are all things that not only keep your stress level down when it comes to meal planning, but they also help keep your, your budget in check and keep you uh, in control of your time because you're not constantly wondering what on earth are we going to eat? You're not going to bed at night and saying, I have no food in the house for breakfast. So I guess we're going to be not only running to the store, but we're gonna do Dunkin' Donuts drive through because I have nothing in my house to eat. Um, I would love to hear your tips for keeping things less stressful in the kitchen, keeping things easy. 
um, making sure that you have what you need to get your week's uh, meals in in the most simple and the most beautiful way possible. Um, I hope that you're having a great week. Um, if you're an Orthodox Christian, I hope that your Lent is off to a good start. Next week, we're going to tackle laundry. I'm excited about that. I will talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.